helping other people grow is yourself growing along the way. Yeah. So what ways do you, number one, have experienced that growth within yourself? And number two, the question I have is like, how do you stay on fire for the Lord after so many years of being involved in ministry, being under your father, and then also coming into youth pastor and now lead pastor? Like, how do you stay on fire for the Lord in that, in that season? Okay. So like staying on fire for the Lord is really, I think for me, like I struggled with my testimony for a while you know, for a long time, because I never had like this falling away from the Lord. I got right. saved at five, baptized in the Holy Spirit at seven, and then just lived for the Lord, you know? Yeah. Like, Interesting. He, I, was, I was deep in drugs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, all this stuff. and finally the Lord yeah. found I'm me. like Taylor. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and so it wasn't anything like that. It's just like, okay, I found the Lord, and then he met me, and then here we are. Yeah. And so I think the big thing for me is just continuing just to love on the Lord. And so making time for him, making space for him, encountering him every day. And so it's not something that like is forced. It's just something that feels natural. Cause it's like, like for me, it was about two years ago. I had this encounter with the Lord where I'm just laying in bed and trying to go to sleep. And then the Lord just spoke to me. He said, you've known me longer than you could write your name. And I just was like, wait, what? And he's like, you know me longer than you could write your name. So before I could write my name, I knew the Lord. And it's like when you have depth with the Lord and you have like depth of relationship, he speaks things to you and you're just like, how can I ever leave you? Like, how can I ever let this fire die out? And, and, you know, for me, it's like that's like the intimacy of the Lord is that like he is just so good. Why would I walk away? And so, you know, keeping a fire burning is I think a lot of it is number one. So for fire, you need three things. You need spark. You need fuel. You need oxygen. So in order to have a fire, you, number one, you have to have sparks. You need to get into an environment that sparks your faith. Like you got to be in an environment that's charged. Got to have an environment where you're just like having the fibrillator, you know, going like clear, you know, <laughs> like you got to be in an environment like that, you yeah. know, where it's a spark to your faith. But then you also have to have fuel. So if you're not reading your word, if you're not engaging with the Lord, if you're not doing things like for the Lord, like obviously you have no fuel. So even if you have a spark, but you have no fuel, you won't have any fire. And then the last thing you need is oxygen. So you need to be engaging with the spirit of God. You need the breath of God to blow on your life. And so if you don't have those three things, then you'll always burn out. But the one thing that is our responsibility is fuel. And so honestly, if you don't even get into an environment that's like charged, the Lord will find you and spark on your life. Like you'll just, that's just his goodness. And the wind of God is always blowing. It's always blowing. The wind of God, the anointing of God is always on your life. It's already geared towards you. It's already blowing on you. But if you don't have fuel, if you're not doing the daily encounter with the Lord, meeting with him every day, reading your Bible, praying, spending time with the Spirit, building yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost, all these different things. If you're not doing the basic stuff, then even if the Lord was blowing on your life and sending sparks your way, regardless, you won't catch on fire. And so unless you have fuel... Nothing else matters. And so how do you stay faithful to the Lord? How do you keep a fire going? By continuing to put wood on it. It's not complicated. It's just simply doing the basic stuff, the boring stuff, and then watch as the Bible comes alive in a new way. Watch as those same old worship songs that you've been singing for 25 years still got oil on it. How? Because it's fuel. It's fire. It's firewood for my soul. Help that fire continue to grow. And you can have as big a fire as you want. If you want to continue to grow the fire, put more fuel on it. The only thing, like, what's the difference between a, a wildfire and firewood in, or a fire, like, in your fireplace? The size of the fuel. Mm. That's the only difference. And so if you want a bigger fire, get bigger fuel. Get more fuel on the fire. And then when we get into an environment where everybody's been pouring fuel on the fire all week, man, the whole thing gets, come, gets like, undone. And so, I mean, that's where revival happens. It's like... Ooh, way to bring it back, yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got in your bag with that one. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> I've been preaching for a long time. <laughs> that boy broke down what fire means. Thank you for being here, and we're so excited that you joined us today. If you guys like the show, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to. If you'd like to support the ministry in any way, you can join us on Patreon. We launched it May 1st. It's a really fun and really awesome things that we're doing out there. We're doing exclusive content, early releasing stuff, 10% off merch. Whatever you can think of, we kind of got it on there as a way to give you some benefits to partnering with us. But the real reason is to be a blessing to the ministry. So uh, you can look at that link in the description. We'll go ahead and have that for you. And if you want to go ahead and read a book, you can go ahead and buy 21 Days in Africa on either Amazon or ilikebirdsministry.com. About a mission trip that I went on to Africa and I uh, just had a great time being able to minister to the widows and the people in front of me and the kids out there. And it's actually through my mother-in-law's nonprofit called the Subi Project. So definitely uh, pick that up if you guys get a chance and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.